Hello everyone, you are watching another episode of Military TV. In today's session, we will discuss about double AV-7 amphibious assault vehicle. If you are eager to know more about this topic, don't go anywhere, stay tuned only at this channel. The amphibious assault vehicle was formerly known as LVTP-7 by the U.S. Marine Corps and other users. It is a big amphibious tracked vehicle that is designed to land troops on sandy beaches. This vehicle is intended as a replacement for the LVTP-5 series, in which the production commencing during 1970 to 1971. This vehicle was then renamed the Double AV-7 in 1985. It had been produced not only for the U.S. Marines, but also for seven export customers, including Argentina, Brazil, Italy, South Korea, Spain, and Thailand. It was planned that the double AV-7 in one amphibious assault vehicle was supposed to be replaced with the next-generation amphibious combat vehicle. A new expeditionary fighting vehicle was designed as a replacement. However, due to funding problems and the aging double AV-7, which are still in use, it was not adopted by the U.S. Marine Corps. It is planned that refurbished and upgraded double AV-7 will remain operational until 2035. Moving on further, let's take a look at general characteristic of this vehicle. The double AV-7 has a crew of three, including commander, gunner, and driver. The capacious troop compartment of the double AV-7 can accommodate up to 25 Marines or around 4,500 kilograms of supplies. The troops are seated on benches, the entry and exit being via a large rear-mounted ramp or roof hatches. In addition, the double AV-7 is launched at sea from amphibious assault ships. This armored vehicle is self-deploying. It is intended for a forced entry into the semi-aquatic areas. The main task of the vehicles during an amphibious assault is to spearhead a beach and to secure coastline for ongoing troops. Once ashore, the double AV-7 can operate alongside other armored vehicles. Its functions include guarding checkpoints, patrolling and carrying troops and supplies further inland. This amphibious armored vehicle has a welded aluminum armor hull. The reason for this is that an aluminum hull is significantly more rigid than a steel hull. It made possible to reduce the number of reinforcing structures and make the interior more usable. Armor of the double AV-7 provides protection against small arms fire and artillery shell splinters. The double AV-7 has been found to be extremely sensitive to landmines and improvised explosive devices in recent military situations. In terms of design, the double AV-7 features a small turret and was originally equipped with a 12.7mm heavy machine gun. Later it appeared that a single machine gun was insufficient. Thus, a 40mm automatic grenade launcher was added on improved double AV-7 A1 model. The upgraded double AV-7 is powered by a new and more powerful engine and is fitted with new water jets. This upgrade was developed by a Science Applications International Corporation and was first revealed in 2016. KAAV 7A1 is a South Korean licensed produced version of the double AV 7A1. It also has heavier turrets with 20 or 30 millimeter cannons, which were tested on this amphibious vehicle, however, eventually were not adopted. This vehicle was originally powered by a Detroit Diesel 8V53T turbocharged diesel engine, developing 400 horsepower, and its engine is mounted at the front. It has a multi-fuel engine, which can run on any grade of petrol, diesel, aviation fuel, or kerosene. The latest production model was the double AV-71, and the earlier models were later brought up to this standard in the late 1970s. Double AV-7A1 improvements included a new Cummins diesel engine pack, night vision devices, a new weapon station control system, improved ventilation, and many other detail changes. Further improvements included universal weapon mounting capable of accommodating a 40mm automatic grenade launcher, 
as well as 12.7 mm machine gun. Talking about its operational history, 20 U.S. built LVTP-7 were used by Argentina during the 1982 invasion of the Falkland Islands with all of them returning to the Argentine mainland before the war ended. From 1982 to 1984, LVTP-7 were deployed with U.S. Marines as part of the multinational peacekeeping force in Beirut, Lebanon. As Marines became increasingly involved in hostilities, several vehicles sustained minor damage from shrapnel and small arms fire. On October 25, 1983, the U.S. Marine LVTP-7 conducted a highly successful amphibious landing on the island of Grenada as part of Operation Urgent Fury. It was heavily used in the 1991 Gulf War and Operation Restore Hope. Moreover, after the 2003 invasion of Iraq, the double AV-7A1 were criticized for providing poor protection for the crew and passengers compared to other vehicles, such as the M2 Bradley. Eight were disabled or destroyed during the Battle of Nasiriya, where they faced RPG, mortar, tank, and artillery fire. Also, on August 3, 2005, 14 U.S. Marines and their Iraqi interpreter were killed when their double AV-7 struck a roadside bomb in the city of Haditha in the Euphrates River Valley in western Iraq. Another case took place when eight U.S. Marines and one U.S. Navy sailor died on July 30, 2020, when their double AV sank in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of San Clement Island, California during a training exercise ahead of an upcoming deployment. As a result of the incident, on December 15, 2021, the U.S. Marine Corps announced that it has banned its fleet of amphibious armored personnel carriers from maritime operations except in emergencies. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. If you find this video interesting, don't forget to share, like, comment, and the most important one to click the subscribe button for more updates on awesome videos.